Okay, let's take a look at this. Um, so we're just going to run it. We're going to see what happens here. So it looks like our pool ball, uh, our basketball and soccer ball, they all bounce off of the wood. So we should be able to see that in our function draw. And look, there it is. So we notice that. Got our sky blue background, and then we have a sprite that's a wood sprite. And then you can see that they're all accelerating, which is good. If they didn't accelerate, it would be like the basketball the first time. It would just kind of keep going up in the air and keep going. Um, but you can see that it accelerates downward because it slows down to a stop, speeds up, and then slows down on the way up, etc. So this is good physics. The problem is, is this soccer ball is going to bounce forever because we've um, essentially given it a, a bounciness of one um, is the default. So it's perfectly elastic collision is what this is called. So it means it retains all the energy when it strikes and returns to the same height that it fell at. That's not normal. Uh, normal is like the other two, when they fall, they will um, only return a certain height. Um, and that's based on this bounciness percentage. So you can treat it like a percent. Basketball is like 80% bouncy, pool ball is 40% bouncy, and the soccer ball is 100% bouncy. So if I go in and change its bounciness, let's say I do 60% for my soccer ball. Uh, or we could do zero. Let's just try that for fun. So it's like a pile of Play-Doh. Okay, it doesn't actually bounce, it just sticks, hits and sticks. Um, but let's make it 0.6 for 60%. And now we should see that these three things drop and you'll see the difference in the bounciness factor. Now to me that doesn't look like it accelerates fast enough. Like if I were dropping a basketball, it doesn't, you know, it's like hovering there. See that? So I'm going to change this value. Let's pump this up to like 0.8. Maybe if we were on the moon, it would look like that. We'll do a 0 0.8, by the way. Uh, it wants you to put leading zeros, which is always a good habit, so that you don't lose that decimal place in space. Okay, that looks a little better. Yeah, that looks like if I drop a pool ball, look at this thing. Dum -dum. That might, still might not be, you know, enough. We might have to make this, you know, 1.2. And this is where you get to decide um, based on the scale of your your stuff. So this looks that looks pretty good. If I drop a basketball from, you know, what five times the basketball's height or diameter. If I drop it from up here, what's it look like when it bounces? And that's what you're trying to mimic with this equation you're, and the acceleration. You're trying to mimic those things. You know, maybe the pool ball isn't as bouncy. So instead of 0.4, we make that a 0.2. Um, and then when it runs, it just does one of those. So that's what bounciness does. It's really cool. You can actually make the bounciness like a multiplier. So if I made it a 2, like this is nuts, but it'll like shoot off um, and then eventually come back down and there it shoots off again. Um, so this is going to perpetually get higher and higher and higher because it's basically bouncing way too much. So we don't want to do that. Sometimes maybe, but usually not. Um, we'll stick it to this. All right. Activities 12 through the rest of it is really modifying this game and utilizing these skills of colliders, collider types, bounciness to make modifications to this game that we've already created. Now mine's going to be a little bit different than yours because I put a score and a lives. I then um, drew the score um, in the lives up here. So, you know, and mine has a few if statements that if you run off the page, it resets you and changes your lives. And then it, if you have lives, you know, zero, less than zero, then it goes to game over screen. So those things I've put into my code, you don't have to have that. So this is what all this stuff is. If the character X goes beyond 500, it resets the character and it makes its velocity zero and its lives negative one or subtracts its lives. I'm sorry, lives gets lives minus one, which essentially takes one away from the lives variable. And then I've got an if statement down here that if lives is less than or equal to zero, then it changes the whole background to red and um, says game over. 
but these are things you don't have to add in yours. Like it's yours should just have sprite movements with this really. And that's really where you should be um, at this point. You can add a score and lives um, at the end here, but for now I wouldn't worry about it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn on my character debug to true. So if you notice, I've commented that line of code out. I'm going to put those back on so we can see what their collider types look like. You can see them there. One's a circle and one's a square or rectangle. Um, I'm also going to create some white space. I just think that's good. And then I'm going to start putting comments in here because it's, it's important that you do the same. So these are your sprites. So usually what I do is I put kind of a heading. And then I, I have my sprites here. And then this would be my variables section. And then I can have my my draw loop. And then I could do, you know, things like updating sprites and these kind of things. I have little comments throughout. So this one, this whole next block of code, this um, checks or checks if character is out of bounds. or if statements to determine location. So something like that. And that gives you those four things. And then you could have something right here. Um, checks for character touching coin. Increments the score. That's what that does. So that's the game over screen. You know, you can add these little lines of co code for comments, and then they'll show up, and there's these gray boxes, which is always good. Um, so where are we at? Let's look at what the instructions are for this. So it wants you to add a sprite to your game called Obstacle. So pretty straightforward. So inside of our sprites, we're going to add a new sprite called obstacle. And we'll just put it at 200, 200. In the animation tab, create a new animation for your obstacle. They have a sun. You don't have to do that. You can use a rock or whatever. Um, doesn't matter what you use. I'm going to go ahead and use the sun. I'm just going to do a search for the sun. And there we go. Let me go ahead and just call it sun. And I'm going to make sure it's cropped. And I'm going to check the size. So it's 150 by 150. That's I think that's okay. Um, if you wanted to resize it to 100 by 100 or 125, you can make it 125 and resize it. So that's a little bit smaller on your screen. Um, or you could use the scale command, either one. Um, I personally like to make it so it's 100% scale when it's full size. So I just adjust the, uh, the animation. We're going to go ahead and set the uh, obstacle to the sun sprite. And now when you run it, you should see it right there. There he is. Now there's a problem because my flyer is right in the middle of it when he starts. So I'm going to change my flyer's Y coordinate to 50 when he starts. So he should start right above. But if you notice, if he goes off bounds, oh, he gets replaced right to here. So all of these blocks of code where I change where he goes off the screen so starting here like that Y value um, is right here I need to put that to 50 on each one of these tomorrow we're gonna learn how to do functions so we don't have to write all this code we can just write a function and call that function because it does the same thing every single time hmm Maybe we can make that easier on ourselves yes we can so now when I run it, you'll see it'll start up here, and then it'll come back to that same spot. Lives is decreasing by one, et cetera, until I get to game over. So that's the first thing I did. It says use the sprite, not say animation, to pick the image. We did. Run the code, make sure the sprite appears where you want it on the screen. And if you wanted to, you don't have to have this in the middle of the screen. You can put it up 
here a little bit more if you want. I'm just going to leave it in the middle for now. And that's all I want you to do. So really it's going to step you through this game development just like we're going to talk about in a couple days is really, you know, do one thing, get it working, move on, do another thing, get it working, etc. So we're going to hit finish on this one. Uh, the next thing we want to do is we want to prevent the player from moving through the obstacle. So there's a couple different interactions that we can have, but again, our interactions are going to be first in our function draw. So what kind of interaction do you want? Do you want bounce, bounce off, collide, or displace for this? You're right. Um, it could be any of them. You get to decide. That's the beautiful thing about being the programmer is you pick. I'm actually going to do collide, and I'm going to say that my hero collides with the obstacle. So when I do that, I'm going to do character and obstacle. So now when I run it, it should drop and hit because now he's collided with it. And we have an immovable obstacle and our character that collides. And if I move him around, Every time I try to run into him, I run into him. And you can see that. But there's a problem. See that right there? Like, look, I hit him right there. And why is that? Well, let's look at our obstacle and do our set or check our debug for our obstacle. So I'm going to do a debugger, and I'm going to do a set collider, because I know that's the issue. I'm just going to go ahead and obstacle, put the value here is true, and I'm going to do that for a coin. We got that going. So there we go. So you can see, like I can actually move my character, and he's not falling down. He's like on this invisible ledge uh, when he's sitting right there. He's just sitting there, just chilling. Well, that's a problem. So let's change that obstacle to a circle and now run it. Okay, so he'll sit when he's right on top, but if I move him just a little bit to the side, he actually falls off. See that? He kind of rolls off like a water droplet. You know, I'm just going to barely get him started. And there he goes. I got, he has no uh, velocity in the X direction right now. And you're like, I don't believe you. Well. You can believe me or not, but that's what's happening. And then when he gets on there and slides, he actually gains an X velocity or actually a negative X velocity as he falls off of there um, due to that interaction. So it's pretty cool to create a circle. So again, this is our interaction. Um, if you use one of the bounce interactions, which, you know, do you want to reset the bounciness? So you could do that. Um, you can have him bounce off of this thing, which, is, which would be great. Um, I might actually do that this time. So instead of collide, I'm going to have that the character bounces off the obstacle. And when I run it, you see he just sits there and he bounces now. Bing, bing, bing. Now, you want it to have that bounciness? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe you go into your character and you change his bounciness. So you say, oops, character bounciness gets, let's make him 0.5. So now he's not going to bounce nearly as high. He kind of bounces to a rest. And then you can have him go up. Oh, see, it bounces off now. So when he runs into it, see, he bounces. Bounces. Bounces off. So if I just had collide, he's not going to not gonna bounce off of that. I kind of like the bounce off. It's not too like harsh, but it's subtle. You get him to, when he hits there, it changes his velocity. And if you're coming in hot, um, he'll, he'll bounce off pretty good. Okay. Cool. Let's go to the next activity. Actually, I'm just going to kind of let you do the next ones um, by yourself because you've got, we've only got 30 seconds left here. Um, the next ones are just going to, what do you do with it? You know, how do you prevent the coin from moving behind the obstacle? Uh, maybe do, if the coin is touching the sun, reset its values again. So there's a lot of things you could do to change this, but finish this up. 
Uh, I've got confidence in your skills. 